greeted our well audience who have come to 22 hour channel. The channel that's produced constant and fasted update on the hottest news both domestically and internationally. In today's news, let's take a look at the most interesting story of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, the small city of Jiuzhou is facing unprecedented flooding. Influenced by the storm Doksuri, the rainfall in Hebei is prolonged. The accumulated rainfall is large. The coverage is wide. The rainfall intensity is strong. Due to the influence of extreme rainfall and flooding upstream, the risk of river flooding and urban flooding in Jiuzhou city is increasing and the flood control situation is very serious. Even before it rained, many people in Jiuzhou began to prepare early. At the call of the government, they piled sandbags and reinforced the doorways, but the damage of the floods far exceeded expectations. There, according to statistics, as of 10 m on Monday, 133,913 people in Jiuzhou and 146 villages with an area of 225.38 square kilometers were affected by floods. The water from the river came rushing in, flooding the streets, flooding the fields, in some places the water was deep, even the traffic light poles just showed up on the water like flags. Shuizhou is still suffering in the midst of a severe flood, but the rescue situation is still very severe, the flood is still coming, the water level is rising too fast. Normally, the Bia Juma River is the mother river of Shuizhou. This river flows down to Shuizhou, joins the Dashi and Shaoqing rivers, and then turns south to Baigu down, nurturing villages and towns. Vicinity. Today, however, many sections of the river are already indistinguishable, overflowing from the river has flowed to neighboring villages and fields, and everywhere it passes is a vast floodplain. In the neighboring villages along the street, most households simply pile sand bags in front of their doors, gates tightly closed, but these resistances are too weak against the fast-moving water. The flood not only crosses sand bags or steps, forming a smooth and endless river, flowing in all directions. Some residents of villages and towns along the way were moved, leaving only empty houses and some livestock, and villages washed away by floods. Compared with rural areas, the situation in Jiuzhou city is better, but it is not optimistic. The water seemed endless, wave after wave. The city's drainage system has reached its peak, with water flooding into houses, washing cars, furniture, pots, and shoes to the surface. After the rain stopped, the weather was uncomfortably hot. Uncle Liu, 82 years old, standing with his hands behind his back on the side of the road looking at the river, which was originally a street, said, This is the first time I have seen such a large flood since I was a child. Uncle Liu was a bit deaf, couldn't hear the reporter's question clearly. He just repeated the depth of this river to the reporter. The railings in the middle of the road were flooded. You can't get into the water, and the deepest part is 4 meters, mister. Liu said the water rose so fast, it was terrifying. Seeing the dry land, the water slowly rose, a few minutes from the ankle to the calf. Rain started last Saturday. In Uncle Liu's impression, Trakshaw rarely had such storms. At 4 p.m. On Saturday, the Jiuzhou Meteorological Disaster Headquarters Office issued a level I emergency response to natural disasters caused by heavy rainstorms. At this time, the rain has not stopped, it rains a lot in the summer, it is not strange to rain all night. At that time, the villagers and neighbors did not expect the heavy rain to cause such great harm. Also born and raised in Trakshao, Duong Kuaiyin, 52 years old, recounted that when she was a child, she also encountered such a flood, when the water in the house did not flood the calf, her parents brought her siblings and siblings. Their go to slap the water out. The flood then came and receded very quickly, meaning it could recede within a day. Unlike this time, the rain had stopped for more than two days but the water was not lacking at all. The water only increased weekly. No one expected that the torrential rain at the beginning of the season could last so long. From 8 a.m. last Saturday to 11 a.m. On Monday this week, the average rainfall in Trakshao City is 355.1 mm. The heaviest rainfall in Luangha Village is 435.7 mm. In many towns and streets exceeds 300. In their hearts, the flood was something very far away from them. Although Zhuizhou has many rivers and irrigation systems, it has been relatively stable in recent years. Because of this, 
Many people were completely unprepared for such a great flood. Uncle Lou's house is fortunate, located on a sloping site, equivalent to the height of a two-story building. Normally, I always feel this place is not good, going up and down the stairs is tiring, unexpectedly lucky to escape the flood. After Vuong Quine stayed at home for a day, she still went to the resettlement area. At first, she always wanted to go back, but near the residential area, the water was flooded to her waist, without a kayak, the water would not have receded. The heavy rain not only brought water into the city, but also caused obvious traffic congestion, as well as a series of chain reactions. The lights of some shops flickered and then went out. Large areas of the city were without power. Some residents affected by the disaster rushed to book hotels immediately, and slightly better hotels in the city showed their rooms were full. There is no hotel that does not have a full room, the phone rings, there is no water, no electricity. When the rain stops, electricity is supplied alternately or intermittently, but the water has not been repaired. In order for people to have water to use, the government provides a number of water trucks for people to collect water. Outside the toilet of the people's hospital in the urban area, long lines of people wait in line to get water. Buckets, big bottles, thicker plastic bags, basically anything that can hold water is used. At the end of the shift, hundreds of meters long queue to get water, they turned out of the building and went many times. Many residents are embarrassed to drink too much water, basically only taking domestic water for the day. The whole of Zhuzhu is saving water. To avoid washing dishes, the restaurant has switched to disposable lunch boxes, although this will increase costs. Bathing has become a luxury, and the weather is extremely hot, but the precious water source can only be used to meet the most basic needs of life such as cooking. Because the hotel could not be found, the reporter slept on a recliner in the hospital corridor. Safety is the most urgent issue that is taken into account after the flood. I don't know how deep the water is on the road, sometimes when I go out, the water on the road is only ankle deep, I don't see any danger. After walking for a while, the water had risen to below the knee, the water began to rise, it felt like a wave was hitting people. The road is full of cars, and the viaduct is also full of cars. Some courageous drivers did not listen to convincing, waiting on the road, the car stalled in the middle of the road, everyone ran out, but the water quickly covered the hood of the car. Plastic bags, ropes and other trash float on the water. Each step needs to be taken carefully so as not to stumble. Many Jiuju people quickly realized the danger when looking at the water. Volunteer Yu Vuong told reporters that just last night, when she was about to go home, she was thrown into the water by a sharp iron plate, which she could not dodge and injured her leg. Not only that, on my calf I also discovered a few bruises, I don't know when I was injured. In the flooded streets of the city, swept manhole covers are a potential hazard. On a provincial road in Bokkao, a shop selling coffins was washed away, and the wooden planks that could not be boarded became a lone boat in the water, floating on the road. In the days after the flood, daily life changed dramatically. Many people's houses were flooded, and under government action, nearby schools and other places became temporary resettlement sites. The Vocational Education Center in Juju is the largest resettlement site in Juju during this storm and flood disaster. The Haida rain here has survived the floods. Moreover, it is currently summer vacation. There is enough space to accommodate residents whose lives have been devastated by floods. The resettlement site was put into use on Sunday evening, and Vuong Trongka and his wife arrived the next day. His family is in a town near the pier, and the water depth in the village is 3 meters. Almost all of them are affected by natural disasters. On Sunday night, the flood began, and within an hour the water in the courtyard had risen to the main room. Wang Cheng's leg was injured as a child, and his children are all in the city, so he and his wife are the only ones at home. His wife called a neighbor to help him climb the stairs to the second floor, then from the second floor to the neighbor's roof. Waiting on the roof for a long time, he saw the rescue forces kayak to come to the rescue. I kept telling her that if the flood waters rose again, leave me alone and get out on my own. Vuong Trongka said that the water rose so quickly that he really felt that this time he might not be able to get out. The wife also wanted to bring more things from home, but in the end only very few things were brought out. All furniture, including the Fleur standing air conditioner bought this year, was soaked in water. 
At the Vocational Education Center, there is a company that provides special meals to ensure three meals a day for the resettled people, and basic living items are also prepared here. It was hot and sunny, but there was a fan in the student dormitory, a room for about eight people, before the flood. I was very satisfied. It has been three days without a break. Han Taiting, secretary of the party cell of the Vocational Education Center, has bloodshot eyes. He told reporters that currently, more than 2,000 people trapped have been resettled here, plus the service instructors and rescue force, which now has more than 3,000 people in the school. We called on teachers and students to become volunteers, and we quickly assembled more than 300 volunteers, most of which were school teachers. Han Taiting said that this is the first time the school has encountered such a situation, and they can only do their best. The volunteer force did a good job of providing logistical support. In some schools, teachers' homes are also affected by floods, and in the face of natural disasters, no one complains that they are tired, let alone retreat. In addition to accommodation and meals, the school's infirmary itself also has medical staff on duty to ensure health for the public. Bathing centers, schools, cafes, shopping malls, office buildings, even arenas were temporarily turned into resettlement areas. Many people bought their own food, water, and medicine, yeast and sent to these temporary homes. Now is the hardest time, but the water will recede. A volunteer told reporters, We enjoyed you thank everyone who came to help us. Our newsletter for today is here to end, please leave any feedback below in the comments. If you find it interesting, give us a like, comment, share and press the bell to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for listening and see you soon. Yes, dear viewers, that concludes today's news. We sincerely thank you and everyone who has been following our news. We wish you and your family good health and happiness. If you find it enjoyable, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon in the top right corner of the screen to not miss the last day news that we will update. For now, goodbye and see you again.